Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Just Meeple and Me YouTube channel. This is Jeremy, and I have a, another unboxing today of a Kickstarter exclusive reprinting of Starving Artists. This is, as I said, the second edition. Came with a few more stretch goals and promo packs. And it is one to four players. And the expansion in the second edition didn't make it five to six, but it takes about 40 minutes, 13 plus, and one to four. And this game, for those of you who have not heard of it, is a time management, resource management game where you are basically trying to survive as an artist. You are collecting paint cubes, placing those paint cube on canvases, and when you complete them, you get points and a couple more food to keep you going. Each day you consume food, and if you run out of food, you are out of the game. And there is a dedicated solo variant with a few new rules in it and we're just going to showcase the contents of this game so here we go okay and we are back and as you can see there's actually two boxes in this game this was all in the first game first content printing this is the standard box okay and i'm just gonna show you the back of it you can see a vincent van gogh painting featured there but starving artist is an award-winning paint by cube game as an aspiring artist, you compete with up to three other players in the ruthless art market, seeking fame, paint, and food. Complete set of world's most beautiful art to survive. Features over 90 great works of art with classically known artists like Monet, Picasso, and others, 150 paint cubes, and rules for solo and younger players. So you can play this as a family if you want, but we are solo, so that's all we're going to focus on. And actually, there's well over 100 paintings in here when you add in the stretch goals and the add-ons oh, it's a nice looking box it is a i mean a fairly small game i mean that's my hand it's barely bigger than that and then this box here was a kickstarter add-on to store some of the um add-on packs and stretch goals plus if you sleeve your cards and i did find sleeves big enough to fit these art cards to protect them that's actually that's going to take away from how much you can store in the first box that's really just an extra box and then it all straps nicely together with this little starving artist band which i like because i really hate when boxes and games totally fit in one box so that's nice to keep that handy so we're just going to open up this first box here and all right and right when you open up the box looks like we have a score tracker there are separate rules for solo mode but when you zoom in there it talks about how many paintings you are trying to complete for various players and little other instructions on on the game there for how many paint cubes you acquire when you sell a painting we got the official rule booklet here and the solo mode is right on the back and there's just a couple modifications to the standard gameplay but Yeah, it's a pretty simple rule book. Comes in at 11 pages. So I said this is a lightweight game for sure. This is not a medium or heavy game. It can take a while to complete and play, but it is not a deep game. But it is a beautiful game, and that is why I add it to my collection. So we have a stack of cards and paintings. This looks like a player card on top where you can store food, turn over, turn over views. Things like that. We're going to open that up. We have a bag. This is where your paint cubes go into because you do draw all these cubes randomly for the most part. There is a variant where you can trade in like three cubes of the same color to look for a certain cube in the bag. And then we got a little food token. So these are all different. We got fish, pineapple, apples, grapes. I think that's it. Carrot. There we go. So that's how you keep track of your, your food values. And acrylic clear coated paint chips so these are nothing fancy but they are clear i think white you can use as a wild card but you can only have like one or two white cubes per painting for it to score so yeah and those just all dump right into that bag there All right, let's open up and take a look at some of these paintings. Okay, so as I said right away, these are the player markers. 
There's four of them. I said in the second printing did include an add-on expansion for five to six players. But it has all the references and player sheets on here and in a couple languages it looks like. So that's that. And here are the paint or the um the painting cards that I was talking about. So this was a promo pack that had the comics and I do remember that. But what I'm really excited about for this game is its educational value. I'm not good at paint history, artists, things like that. When I play Jeopardy at home with my wife, worst category I have. And every card shows you the artist, the name, the year, things like that. And then if you're colorblind, it does tell you how many cubes of each color you need. But for this painting, you would need one orange, two yellows, a blue, and a black cube to complete. Scores you three food, 11 paint cubes, but zero star power. So this could be an easy to complete one that could get you more food, but it's not gonna generate you a lot of points at the end of the game. So maybe just a little bit of strategy in here on which cards you're trying to complete based on if you're trying to really survive or food or get points or not. So there is that artwork. You know, but here are some, what the most of them look like, these classical paintings. I can't even pronounce that artist's name, nor am I going to try. But I just think these are gorgeous. And this one I think we all know is Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. A beautiful replication or replica of that. And this one takes a lot more cubes, but it does get you four points. And another Vincent Van Gogh painting. So you can kind of see how those are. And I'm just going to shuffle through some of these rather quickly, but just give you an opportunity to see what some of these cards look like. So that I added it to this game because, or I backed this game, and was really looking forward to get it, was because it's, I think it's a beautiful game with the components, the cards. I think it's a way that I can teach my kids about art and artists. Thematically, I didn't have any games I had to deal with the art world at the time. I do have the gallerist now, but this is a little bit more intimate from an actual art level. So I am excited about that. And just to see some beautiful, beautiful pictures. Another comic one there, again, worth zero points. So. Well, dinosaur, Monet, and his water lilies. Some of these I've seen before. Most of them I have not. And I mean, there is, I mean, just, as I said, over 90 of these cards. So every game you play, it's gonna be a little different. You're gonna see more art. It's gonna be exciting. And as I said, these are pretty big cards. I mean, these alone are as big as my hand. I'm so glad they chose bigger cards for this because that lets the art stand out. Yeah, this isn't like linen print or anything, but the cards do feel nice. As I said, I did find sleeves of them because I do want to protect these as they are kind of beautiful. So that is the core box. That's basically everything in the first printing. And as you see, I mean, that stacks all the way up there, but I did get the add-on for some of the other stretch goals and the storage box. And there are a few. Oops. There we go. A few other packs in here. Now one of these I am not going to open because it is the not safe for work pack here. But I mean, there's 20 prints in there, but it has violence, nudity, sexual themes. So we're not gonna show this one on YouTube. This is the five and six player rule change with a couple add-on tokens, bread and donuts. But they we're gonna be mostly solo. But then there are some bonus packs in here. So we're just gonna open up a couple of these and shuffle through and just showcase that art quick. Okay, everyone, and we are back here. And first I wanna showcase these sketch paintings because these ones have like special powers in it for instance, maybe they all have the same special action they do. But if you complete one of these sketch paintings, it says, as your free action, you may sell the sketch for five paint cubes of your choice from the bag. Others take one paint cube each from the sketch. 
So it is a way that you could put some paint cubes on here that you don't want and then be able to pick and choose a few. There's no points, no food associated, but you might be able to get the paint cubes you want and therefore you can complete the paintings you need to get food score points. So a little bit I can see already without even playing the game, but there is some strategy involved in this game, although not a ton. As I said, it is lightweight. So we have, again, some of these classical paintings that some of us may recognize. Of course, the Sistine Chapel of Michelangelo recreated here. So let me just thumb through a couple more of these. For everybody to see and then we'll just wrap this video up but as I said it has the artist name the painting title the year so some really good historical educational value in this game I think I'm looking for them there they are um, Zafty Games also published a solo only game recently called Cristello which I received with this shipment and I'm going to be doing a playthrough video of that soon. And these were a stretch goal that recreated the imagery from Cristello. Zafty Games is the publisher of Starving Artists and also of Cristello. So that was a promo pack, but that's just some really fun, vibrant art as well. I'm kind of glad they had the crossover promotion. So, okay, that is, that is Starving Artists. As I said, it is a simple game content-wise. I mean, it is... Basically a bag of cubes and a very large deck of replica artwork. And your job is to paint and survive. I do think thematically it fits because all these famous artists were starving at the time of their death. A lot of them didn't get famous or their paintings become valuable to well after their death. I mean, art artists are not appreciated in the moment. They are appreciated, you know, decades, if not centuries later, if at all. So I do think that Starving Artist thematically recreates the pressure of being an artist. So until next time, guys, it will be just Meeple and me.